Welcome to CES 2015, live at the WebMD Wellness Lounge. I'm Dr. Daniel Kraft, Chair of Medicine at Singularity University and Exponential Medicine, here with Joe Chiani, the founder and CEO of Massimo, an incredible healthcare technology uh, company. It's released some new products here at CES, and two world-class athletes, uh, Dotsi Bausch, a silver medalist in the 2012 Olympics, and Stig Severinsen, a world record holder in freediving. And so, gee, Joe, um, just kick us off with what Massimo's doing and what you've announced here at CES. Thank you, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Massimo has been around for about 25 years. We were able to solve the tough problem of non-invasive monitoring, even under situations where the patients are moving or have very low perfusion, and that revolutionized pulse oximetry, and with it now we've saved countless lives and have helped physicians reduce eye damage in babies, have helped them uh, detect critical congenital heart defect, and ever since then, we've done more in expanding what's possible to measure non-invasively, like hemoglobin, like carbon monoxide. But what I'm really proud here is that we've taken that technology that's been put on over 100 million patients a year around the world in some of the top hospitals like Mayo Clinic, Hopkins, Mass General, and we're now taking that technology to athletes like Stig and Dotsi, and they're using it now to push themselves to a new level of uh, athletic performance without the need for doping, without the need for doing other things to make themselves at the top of their game. Right, so I've used your technologies as a physician where the feedback loop, the data is critical, and using that in both the you know, inpatient world, the outpatient world. So, Dasi, you're using this now as a cyclist, a world-class cyclist. How do you leverage this technology? Maybe we can describe it and show it a little bit as well. Sure, absolutely. As, uh, as Joe was saying, it's, um, <clears throat> we're uh, launching it here at CES in a, under a platform of data not doping, and that was uh, our focus leading into uh, London 2012. So as elite athletes, uh, our challenge is always figuring out how we can get the most out of our bodies, optimum output and optimum recovery to be able to perform at our best. So this... Um, uh, O2 monitor is called the Mighty Sat, and it's completely wireless. It works with iOS and Android. And I used it religiously every morning, every afternoon after working out, and every night. And the most important number is, uh, is at the top, which is actually the saturation of oxygen inside of my blood. And as you can see right now, it's at 97. Now it just went to 98. So I would use it every morning to see if I was ready, if my body was prepared and ready to handle the rigors of training. So if it dropped uh, at sea level, training under about 94 I would know okay it's time to pull the reins back I need to make some adjustments to today's training and and coach and I would would uh, make those adjustments if it's it was above 97 we knew we were ready to rock so this new version is now wireless the other ones were tethered can you yes. just show the device and what data you're getting from that yes okay so that top number as I just said is uh, the SPO2 right so that is the actual oxygen saturation in my blood now, yeah, there we go. And that bottom number is uh, my pulse rate. So uh, we use that in conjunction with resting heart rate every morning. And then uh, we have a number that's PI, which is perfusion index, which is just show showing uh, how good the circulation is in, in my fingertips there. And then that other number, PVI, is actually showing uh, my hydration levels. And I was expecting it to uh, be worse here in Las Vegas with the dry air and, uh, and whatnot, but it actually shows that I'm fairly hydrated this morning. So key number as well. And you and, you and other bicyclists and Olympic athletes are using this kind of technology to again tune your workouts and optimize your performance. Absolutely, yeah. So Stig, you've got a really interesting sport. You've got the world record in breath holding and, and free driving as your sport. How do you use this uh, physiologic type technology? Well, I, I've used the Massimo over a couple of years now and um, the, the, the Guinness World Record I hold now is uh, 22 minutes. So uh, I really need to know where I am in my saturation. I need to know my heart rate and I need to know the pulse rate and I need to go back sometimes and look at that data to analyze, to even, you know, perform better and see where did I kind of steer off and where do I need to do some corrections and, and mentally, you know, I have to link that to the physiology. So what I think is beautiful about this little beautiful device is that it actually tells you what's going on inside, you know, and you get an actual number. Uh, and it's non-invasive, so you don't have to need, you know, needles and stuff like that. You can use it anywhere. And as an athlete or, you know, at home, if you have smoker's lungs disease or emphysema or whatever, things that, you know, will 
impede the oxygen from going into your bloodstream, this device will tell you how you're feeling. So it's not just a performance, it's also health. And, and maybe the most interesting in my sport is the, the oxygen level. <laughs> Because I go to very low levels, you know, almost not comparable with being, you know, conscious. <laughs> what oxygen saturation will you go down to? I will go to below 50, uh, which is, I would say, in a normal clinical situation. If you go below 85, you would probably see red, you know, alarms go off on the on the hospital bed. So it's, it's very low. Um, people should never try to hold their breath in water alone, really, because it kind of becomes like, like a dream state and you, you don't feel happy, so you kind of keep going at it. So if you want to hold your breath, it's very healthy. You should do it on dry land. But the other thing that really um, has, has impressed me with the Massimo technology is that I was doing some other world records last year in, in Greenland, the most extreme temperatures, East Greenland. Uh, I, I hold a Guinness World Record of longest dive under ice. And I really need to know about my body physiology before I dive. I hold the one 500 feet in a suit, but I also hold the one in a speedo. <laughs> it's kind of what we do in, you know, Viking style. And, and the other devices I had and some stuff I used broke. They broke. The, you know, technology and, 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 and all the electronics is very sensitive, even in, in phones. So when you go to extreme temperatures and you still have a device that works, that's, you know, something that, that's really something that makes me happy because I can perform better. Clearly there's a sport for everybody and the blending yeah. <laughs> of, uh, of health technology moving to sports technology and physiology is really powerful. Joe, maybe uh, take us home here. Where do you see this Massimo type technology heading both in the clinic, in the sports physiologic realm, and how's this tying into the really important field of patient safety? Well, uh, as I s we started off as a company focused on healthcare focused on hospitals and doctors and babies and, and we've felt very gratified in that pursuit. But we see the future that there is an important element in people trying to stay away from hospitals mm -hmm. and that is how to understand their own bodies, when to push themselves, when not to. But it's critical as they do that, they rely on technologies that are giving them uh, data that has veracity. Otherwise, you'll have garbage in, garbage out, and the whole idea of big data uh, will be bad data. So uh, we, we love what DOTC and STIG are doing with it. They're teaching us what they can do with it. We have some new measurements we're hoping to bring to consumers, like non-invasive hemoglobin and carbon monoxide. dotsi has been doing a little bit of work about that, and she's kind of excited about what it can do for her, uh, exercising at elevations and how to increase her hemoglobin which increases her fuel capacity when she needs to really go for that last charge. And if the, this, this one last thing I want to say, I've also started a new foundation, the Patient Safety Movement Foundation, where we're trying to help prevent patients dying in hospitals needlessly. And I have a plug, we're having our summit on January 23rd and 24th in Irvine, California. Uh, hospitals, med tech companies, lawmakers are all coming together to do something about the 200,000 people that are getting killed in our hospitals every year due to preventable causes. Right. And you're really bringing ICU level technology to your finger. And, yes. and making that mobile, connected, and, and data driven. So with that, I want to thank Mike Massimo, our amazing athletes, uh, for joining us here at the WebMD booth at CES 2015. Um, look for their technology, massimo.com. Thank you. Thank you.